This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Hello, hello. Welcome, dear listeners out there. Welcome to 22. Uh, yeah, 22. Only 22, yeah. Uh, still not used it. <laughs> Welcome, Leon. How yeah, are you today? I'm pretty good, and you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Can't so, complain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's the German saying. I can't translate that. Okay, forget about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, welcome everybody out there on the radios, in the home ports, whatever. Uh, <laughs> on the uh, Alexas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not so much. Uh, I have a little daughter, and she really dislikes it when I am listening to podcasts on, on the. <laughs> yeah. on Understandable. The, it's like, yeah. Who wants to listen to that if you're a little child? <laughs> well. Oh. Of <laughs> oh, I mean, of course. <laughs> okay, like, forget about that. Um, today, we have a fantastic interview, I have to say, with mm -hmm. uh, our friend Rob Tyndall in, in South Africa in Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, and as the headline says, it's about organizing a, a sports event, mm -hmm. uh, a major sports event in South Africa uh, about surf ski paddling. Oh, yeah, if you're Surfsky paddling. Curious, like, <laughs> <laughs> Leon just gave me a strange look. <laughs> if you have the same look, stay tuned and find out what Surfsky paddling is, but, but also find out a really good uh, report from a long-term Modic user who is really a user, not a developer, but uh, does fantastic things and has a lot of insights as well. Yeah, yeah. talking about long-time Modic users, I think the last episode... You've had a kind of monologue, but also a dialogue with Andy, and you have something to add. I have, I have, I have. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. First of all, I'm, I'm glad um, that you're back. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's it's nice to have a conversation rather than that monologue. But but in the interview, and Andy really um, took out his Swiss Army knife <laughs> and. Yeah. Uh, told us about his tips and tricks, and I got a little bit of feedback of people who said, well, doesn't really work for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because there are two things that are not entirely without gotchas. One yep. is um, to send an email based on the recipient's time zone. That does mm -hmm. not work in every situation. No. Mostly, it only works when you set it to at a relative time period. And uh -huh. even then, there seem to be some some shakiness, some forum threads about that. No. I'm not completely deep into in, into that, but but yeah, uh, you're not the only one if, if you're having, if you're struggling with it. The other one is dynamic content in emails, which is of course one of our favorite things in, in Modic. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, and Except. it is still there in <laughs> Modic 4 and in, with Grapes.js Builder, but mm. it's not there if you're using an MJML template. Yeah. So, which is default, of course, these days. So, um, we're working hard <laughs> to have that back real soon. So, if you want want to learn details, go to the Builders Initiative in the Slack channel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, trust me, it's in our, in our own interest to to have this yeah. back really soon, and it's going to be there. So, no worries. <sighs> yeah. So, let's get to the actual <laughs> episode. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Welcome once again to episode. 31. This is the Mordecast in on January 17th yeah. in 2022. 2022. Oh, <laughs> tr tricky, tricky <laughs> number. Getting tongue tight. Yeah. Um, I would like to start today with a bit longer um, segment, mm -hmm. and that is on an annoying thing, and that's form spam. Yeah. Yeah. Heard about it. Yeah, we've all heard about it. It's not a new thing. It's been around for a while. It's basically um, uh, bugging forum owners. So so the bots and then the bad guys have been there to, to spam the forums, to, to drop their uh, crappy links and, yeah. and, and crappy messages in any forums they can find. Um, this one is more about uh, forms that lead to an email mostly uh, double opt-in emails, but other confirmation emails or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so the the um, attack vector here is basically I enter some crap in a form, mm -hmm. fill in your uh, email address, yeah. and then you get the confirmation message 
which contains some of the crap that I just entered. And uh, the reason that that works is that uh, we're using Mordic personalization in in that email. And of course, the, the content, the, the things that have been added, entered, are not properly verified yep. or sa sanitized. Um, and that's not theory. It's, it's actually been three times last week that I've been oh. in touch <laughs> with this topic. Damn. The first one was was more on a, on a theoretical level because in our German language user group, mm -hmm. Mordecamp DE, uh, we had a talk by our friend Andre yep. who discussed that. It had been a topic in last year and so we said, okay, let's make this a main type topic in January. Mm -hmm. So we gave a little uh, inspirational talk there. We had a lot of discussion about it, etc. Yep. The very same evening, <laughs> um, a friend of mine who was working in a city close to Hanover where I live yep. uh, told me a little story from, from his company where oh. over the weekend uh, like like half a million emails had been sent. Wow, uh, it started <laughs> Friday evening. It was only noticed Monday morning and immediately mm. stopped of course stop of course by disabling the form. Yeah. But of course the damage had been done already. And then just another three days later a forum post by Alex who was in the Mordic forums that mm -hmm. said, oh, many hundred million, uh, many hundred thousand emails been sent, really annoying, and here's a little video on how to uh, enable Honeypot field in Mordic to avoid this as good as we can. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a hot topic. It is uh, popping up left and right and, and probably not going away. So I want to, first of all, give everybody a heads up to be careful about it and also give, give some background and guidance on what to do. Uh, I already described how people do that. Mm -hmm. So let me give a real simple uh, example. If I enter your email address yeah. and instead of uh, name Leon, I enter Leon, comma, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> HTTP colon uh, slash slash my crappy link dot com. Yeah. Um, and then the double opt-in email goes back to you and says, hello, Leon, come on, check this out, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, I see where this going. Yeah. Uh, works really nicely. Yeah. Um, and of course, the, the, it, has, it, it relies on personalization, right? Mm -hmm. So if we just send the double opt-in email, it says, uh, hello, thank you for your registration. Please click here to verify. Yeah. Um, then no malicious links can be posted here. Truth. Still, people will receive emails that they didn't, did not sign up for, but yep. then, of course, your email goes, if you did not do this, please ignore this email, and yep. people ignore the email, and no it, damage is done. Ends up not being that bad. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, let, let's, let's reflect on that a little bit. So, so the re one of the biggest damages is, of course, when there are malware links, and out of the uh, half a million recipients, yeah. just a, a fraction of one thousandth will click on that. That still means that 5,000 mm -hmm. people get infected by, by malware yeah. because you did not do a good job with your form. So, wow, bad. So you don't want that. Uh, even if that's not the case because you managed to avoid the, the links or whatever. Um, but this crap goes to users. That's... Um, damaging your image yeah. on the recipient side and maybe it makes news or whatever um, and we shouldn't forget it also damages reputation with the email delivery services yeah. because also a bad. good number of the users will hopefully click spam mm -hmm. and then Google and all the others know oh well email from this IP address once again from that domain once again well probably spam yeah yeah And that's so hard to fix. So you don't want to damage your reputation. So you do want to avoid this crap. Yeah. Um, and there's, of course, more bad things like like if there's a half a million signups, that means half a million leads, leads in your yeah. CRM. <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, angry <laughs> people. And a lot of cleanup work to do. <laughs> a lot of work to do, but in a red alert, in red alert mode, and, yep. and everybody in your neck, and so on. So, okay, you don't want that. And the question is, how can you avoid it? Um, as I said, if you don't have the personalization, at least the, the outside damage it will be avoided. Yeah. Um, 
but also your emails are not as nice. But but okay, that's a, a an easy fix or yeah. easy mm -hmm. easy mitigation. Um, the other thing is to figure out whether it's a human or a machine mm -hmm. that's filling out the form. That's uh, as we all know impossible to really achieve, but you can get close. Yeah. Yes. Um, so honeypot field, I don't want to go into the details of all, of all the methods. Honey, honeypot field or traditional captures like here's, please, please type what you see or here's a math uh, task or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Not great. May do a w job, but, but sometimes, but sometimes really, it doesn't. Yeah. The really sophisticated attackers can easily hack that. They have good tools or, yeah. or powerful tools. Um, so you go up to the real powerful sophisticated captures. We all love this uh, Google recapture thing. Like, like oh, please oh, click on no. <laughs> images with a palm tree. Or, oh, no, my or, nemesis. <laughs> yeah, well, um, no, th that's, p people hate that and, and that actually keeps people from filling in the form. Yeah, from a marketer standpoint, it's devastating. Yeah. So... Yeah, there, there are things that you can do, of course. Um, For example, like Recapture 3 or Friendly Capture. Yeah, which, yeah, good point. Recapture 3 is maybe known to most of you, like like same thing by Google, but without clicking anything. Yeah. Just Google tracking your mouse movements and, and determining that there's some sort of human with erratic mouse movements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it has implications. It means that Google is tracking your mouse movements. So uh, that's no. if you are in GDPR countries, or, mm -hmm. uh, uh, issue. or if you are a thinking human, you don't want it. Um, friendly Capture, tell, tell us about that. Friendly Capture is a commercial alternative to Recapture 3. It also checks uh, in the background whether your mouse is moving at all or if it's kind of like strangely, I'd say. And it's also self-hosted, so you won't run into issues that you would have if you're using Recapture 3 because you're GDPR confirmed. Yeah, it, it can be self-hosted, it can even be hosted, but in the EU, it's a German company, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. it doesn't store any cookies, etc. Perfect. So <laughs> it's a GDPR friendly, and it does a really good job as far as I know. It's not completely on the same level because it enters the data as Google. Yeah. Oh, okay. But okay, it's it's a good alternative. And then there's another uh, element in uh, fighting this crap. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's in verifying the entries. Yep. Um, validating the user entered data. One is on the in the form with JavaScript, but that can be um, worked around. Yeah, manipulated. <laughs> the other thing is around, yeah. um, to actually do a server-side server um, validation, uh, sanitizing, and if there's an HTTP colon slash slash in the name, no. then just throw away that or, or put it for review or, or whatever. Yep. Yeah, so that there's, there's a limited number of means. There's a little bit more like, like blocking IP networks or something. But I think, in my mind, first of all, be aware of it. Make sure there's no... Yeah. No complete loophole. Uh, if there is, it at any moment you can be flooded and uh, won't know where your head is. Uh, so do something about it. Um, in an ideal setup, you will have a good capture, like friendly capture. Mm -hmm. You will have a server side validation of the user entry. Oh yeah. Um, but there may be scenarios where you don't need this whole bucket because you have you are low profile target and um, probably the, the bad hackers will not go to you and the honeypot is still okay. Yeah. The other tip that I would give to people is to think about a plan B. So if you just have a use, if you just have a honeypot and you notice that you're under attack, then you wouldn't have to disable the form. Maybe you can just add a stronger capture at that moment and make it a little bit more user unfriendly but yeah. at least you can react and keep the form up and running uh rather than closing your business yeah yeah uh which of course implies you have to notice it in the first place so yeah. if nobody's monitoring the number of forms then, issued, then, then yeah. yeah you can find it luckily yeah. but 
Ja. Yeah, okay, let's mm. talk about Mordic implication, uh, um, implementations of all this. Mm. Um, there's a simple honeypot field or capture field uh, there by default, but there also is um, the recapture plugin by, by Konstantin Scheumann mm -hmm. uh, ah. that we talked about. Yeah, um, we talked mm. about that already, like uh, episode 20, 20 21, 20, yeah. I think 20. 20. Sounds about right. Um, that one has now been taken over, is ma mostly maintained by Steno Kuzmani. Mm -hmm. Um, nice. And will I, as I understand, will move to the core in the next couple of me weeks. So yeah, perfect. That's good news. It supports recapture version three. Does not support friendly capture, but that's going to be yeah, there soon. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Room for la, 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 la. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But talking about Kusmani, um, I think due to Christmas he released some of his plugins for free, yep. which were commercial before. So yep. check out his uh, GitHub and see if there's something you can make use of. But there's also another plugin which we which he released, uh, which is called FormTab, which is also a commercial plugin, I should add that, um, which lets you see in the contact details a new tab called Forms, and there you can see like uh, which forms the user already submitted mm -hmm. on a really easy scale. So if you submit the 10 forms, you will find them all there. And you don't have to manually search for yeah. them, like in the forms, yeah. details, yada, yada. Yeah, I think for most people, it sounds a little bit, hmm. Why do I need that? But there are some some cases which this could be really helpful. For example, if you're having an e-commerce shop, like your orders there through submissions, or if you have support requests, yeah. 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 that's a case where it's pretty, pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah, check it out. And then... Um, Moving on to more contribution mm -hmm. with two names uh, that popped up yeah. in my, my uh, um, field, field of view. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and one, one comes from Brazil, uh, from Leo Schule, mm -hmm. or whatever that is, is in <laughs> Portuguese. Yeah. Um, he issued a video, or uh, a little video in English, <laughs> I have to say, um, about tracking things and connecting things to Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, etc. Nice. It was some real wizardry of um, getting Mautic data into Google Analytics and, and beyond. So yeah, do check that out and I sure hope we see more from Leo real yeah, soon. Sounds really good. Yeah. Um, the other one is uh, more li like a journey report. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> user uh, experience. <laughs> by, by somebody with with the forum handle big n y n o, I have no idea <laughs> who's behind that, but it's his or her first posting yep. in the forum, uh, and it's pretty much about uh, the experience in troubleshooting uh, in, an error five hundred, mm -hmm. uh, fighting cron job issues and and or or misunderstandings, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Illegal signs or char characters in tags, uh, blah blah blah, all things that may be harmful, and mm -hmm. how to resolve that. And uh, I I love the fact that that they not only analyzed that thoroughly, but also shared that that report in the forum for yep. everybody else to learn from. So really yeah, good. welcome to the forum and thank you very much. Shout out to Big and YNO. Yeah. Talking about forum and contribution, there's one name which drops from time to time, let's say, and it's Joey. Last episode, I think you already mentioned that he started running a BioJoey supporter program mm -hmm. in which you can drop a couple of bucks each month, if I remember correctly, about 20 euros or dollars mm. um, each month, and you can support him just because he's great and does a lot of contribution, but also he's producing a bit of supporter extra content and a bit of early access so if you support joey and respect his uh, yeah, contributions and want to support him even further um go check it out because he's a really good yeah contributor to the modern community yeah. if nothing, nothing else let's show our appreciation yeah. exactly now leon here's a Question for you. Oh. Did you ever try surf ski paddling? Not yet. <laughs> you have any clue what it is? Yeah, I'm not, but I will find out, hopefully. You will. Okay, <laughs> listen to this. Here comes Rob Tyndall from uh, Cape Town. Let's go.
Yeah, today is, it is my pleasure to welcome Rob on the show, Robin Tyndall from South Africa. Hello and welcome. How are you today? Hey, Eka. Yeah, privileged to be here. Thank you very much for having me uh, on the Mordicast. And uh, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing well down here on the uh, southern tip of Africa. Yeah, lovely, lovely summertime down there. <laughs> yeah, um, we have been in touch for a little bit on and off. I think th since first Mordicon or something like that, but we never really talked. And I appreciate the chance that that we now can actually talk live. Uh, and uh, I did learn a lot of interesting things before, um, and I thought it's a good topic for everybody in the Mordic world because you are not a heavy developer, but, but uh, deep inside using Mordic, and so that's what we are going to talk about. Before we do that, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about South Africa, maybe, about yourself, and uh, what, what else is there in, in, in the background to know? Yeah, um, yeah. South Africa is a fascinating place. I think we've been in the news quite a bit because uh, we keep discovering these new uh, coronavirus variants in in our country, mm. and then we, we we get labelled for it. So I think that's probably <laughs> what people know South Africa for most recently. I think Omicron, <laughs> we've, we we discovered it, and therefore suddenly it's our virus. That was that was quite interesting down here, um, but. Uh, Yeah, South Africa is a really interesting place to live. Um, it's uh, a, a lovely mix, uh, or maybe not always a nice mix, but a lovely mix between uh, first world uh, complexity and and um, and abilities, and uh, you know African third world as well. So it's uh, it's it's a very interesting place and. Our political climate and uh, and unemployment and crime and and things like this are something we live with every day. It's all I've ever known. But at the same time, we've got cities like where I live, Cape Town, Johannesburg, which would rival you know Paris, New York, um, and you know uh, you know Munich possibly uh, to some extent in uh, in in uh, some of the stuff that we can get up to here. Yeah, Cape Town in particular is, is fairly got a fairly vibrant kind of kind of uh, what's the word Silicon Valley style uh, community going on in Cape Town and it's beautiful and the other great thing about South Africa is our, our currency is not so great which is terrible for us if we live here but if you want to come and visit uh, wherever you're coming from mm. your money's going to go a really long way so uh, yeah definitely a place for you to come and check out yeah maybe one of the next mod modcons should be in, in uh, Cape Town maybe Yeah, that would be amazing, and it, it really is it's truly a remarkable city. Yeah, just uh, just traveling down here, but yeah, someone we, we can we can look at for sure. Um, and uh, but I'm actually not from Cape Town. I'm from Durban, which is a, a, a smaller, uh, still significant, but a smaller city on the east coast of uh, of South Africa. Mm. And um, but I ended up in Cape Town, uh, as most people tend to do, because it's uh, the climate's not as hot and sweaty, and it's uh, it's a, a more vibrant city. And, and especially if you're kind of in the tech space, uh, it is the it is the place to be so but I've, i've been living in cape town now for oh i don't know 15 16 years so it's very much very much my home mm. and uh, it's an ocean city and i spend my life on the ocean which is actually i, I use more quite a lot with <laughs> with some of my ocean sports so i think we'll talk more about that in due course oh yeah oh yeah uh, it's it's I, i just uh try to figure out the exact year but it must be like 25 years that i've been to to cape town and i tend to remember that that durban at the time was also a Big, big university uh, and uh, also a very lovely city i think close to kruger park or something right all right you've been a, you've been to south africa you've been in cape town fantastic yeah Dur yeah durban's durban's gorgeous uh, you, uh, well durban used to be fantastic um it's taken a bit of a slip and if any of my my durban friends are listening i apologize but uh yeah <laughs> durban i don't think is what it is what it used to be but uh yeah it's gorgeous it's got a big university there as well i think cape town the university of cape town is probably more well known um but uh durban And certainly the gateway into a lot of the game parks, the the safaris and so forth in in that part of the world. Uh, yeah, also also a beautiful city, and certainly my where I was born and raised. Uh, so I, I've, yeah. I've got to I've got to give it credit. <laughs> okay, okay. So mm -hmm. let's move on from from uh, the uh, touristic marketing <laughs> to, <laughs> to you being born and raised and uh, educated. There, there's. Uh, Some some professional life with digital marketing as well. Uh, how, how did that all start for you? Yeah, so try and compress a, a really colorful career into into a few moments. Um, 
I'm actually, my, my university training uh, is actually in the world of sports medicine uh, and uh, rehabilitation and so forth. And that's, that's where I come from. Um, and uh, there's a very famous institute in Cape Town called the Sports Science Institute linked, linked to University of Cape Town. And I studied there. And, uh, but before I'd even qualified, I had already kind of opened a practice and was, had hired some of the um, some of the graduates who are ahead of me to work in my practice, and uh, I very quickly realised I was more of an entrepreneur than uh, than someone who was uh, into healing people. So that's how I kind of got into marketing. Uh, I com- you know, bought some companies and started some companies, and some were failures and some were successes. But I kind of realised that marketing, for the most part, my ability to market or not market, was kind of what determined the success of those companies. If I could get customers through the door, um, then we could make money. And yes, the operational stuff and holding stock and paying your bills were all very important, but without customers, you know, nothing would work. Mm. So I kind of transitioned from, from this medical world into entrepreneurship and owned a couple of companies. And um, sometimes having to bootstrap stuff, I had to do things myself. So uh, hence kind of what is a website? You know, how do I, I had to teach myself WordPress and, uh, and that's kind of where it, where it rolled. And um, I think I sold my last company and that sounds glamorous. Uh, it wasn't a significant company, but I sold my last company about four years ago mm-hmm. and uh, went into the marketing game full time which is where I am now. I, I either uh, kind of coach or mentor or, uh, you know, instruct in marketing. And I've also got a, a marketing agency there where we have a, a done for you service where we'll, we'll help companies scale their marketing through marketing automation practices. Okay. So, so to be clear, that's two companies really. One is lead genius. I know. Yeah, exactly right. I guess yeah. so I've got uh, leadgenius.biz, which is uh, more the coaching and for focused on small businesses and startups. Um, so it's more showing you how to do it and working with you how to do it because um, typically when you're in that stage of your career building or your business building, you don't have budget to go and hire people to do things for you. And I know how difficult it is and how hard it is to teach yourself to do stuff because I've done that. Um, mm-hmm. So I kind of, I've walked those those miles mm-hmm. and uh, so my team and I, you know, help you to do the same, but at a, at a much faster rate and uh, without wasting time and energy um, but still you're in, you're in control you're in the driving seat and then my second agency which is actually new it's not even six months old is called Red Robin dot agency, and that's our done for you service. And there, we're focusing on companies who were already successful, have already got a, a sales process, a marketing process that's working, but perhaps it's not automated, it's not scalable. Uh, it might be very heavy on on sales teams and yeah. reps, and you know traditional advertising. We help you transition into into a marketing automation space, so you can scale uh, your your abilities without having to scale your your expense at the same time yeah. uh, so that's what red robin does okay yeah interesting approach to have a distinct company for for that but but okay yeah, that's that's uh, what you did in the past right multiple companies <laughs> and, uh, respect to that um okay you already mentioned this uh, water sports fascination of yours um And that includes online activities, but let's talk about the offline part first. So like, like, what is that sport? What does it mean for you, etc.? Yeah, so just to give it some context, I'm, I'm using more tech to actually manage aspects of, of, of the sport I'm involved in. But that uh, I'm, I'm just sport mad, have been my whole life. And in particular, water sports growing up on the coast, I've, I've been playing in the ocean since yeah since the very very beginning um so I, i always joke if it goes under the water you know on the water through the water or even over the water as long as it's not too high up in the sky i've probably done it and probably competed in it as well uh, but the flavor of the month right now is is a sport called surf ski paddling um and uh, it's essentially racing kayaks the kind of racing canoes and kayaks you might see at the olympics um but they're slightly longer just the skinny and um slightly modified to be more suitable to the ocean and um Now we're you know we're racing those and out at, out at sea racing each other and then also the real fun part of it is is when the wind's really strong and the and there's you know big chop on the ocean and big swells running uh, we'll go out and do long distance paddles being pushed by the wind and the swells and it's quite high speed and quite a, quite exhilarating and mm. uh, surfing kind of far out to sea on these skinny little boats uh, called called downwind <laughs> paddling like fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's 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 really good and Cape Town is famous for this for the Cape Doctor which is a, a super oh, strong wind that that blows in fact it's yeah. blowing outside now I hope. Uh, We don't hear it in the microphone. And uh, so Cape Town's a fantastic place for surf ski paddling. We have really cold water, but um, 
you get used to that. Uh, so that that's the sport, and we have we have events and races and clubs and all kinds of things wrapped around that. And I'm fairly active in that side of the sport. Okay, and the, the so it's more than just the sport of the month. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely, I run, um, and I've, I've used Mortec. I run a, a surf ski race uh, in Cape Town, uh, which is, I think, four years old now. And uh, we're the biggest uh, single day surf ski race in South Africa. And I haven't checked recently, but we shift between being two, three or fourth biggest surf ski race in the world. It's a fairly small sport, so it's not major numbers to achieve those goals. Um, but uh, to, to organize a race and an event, uh, it was, wow, a really, really a complex event. So yeah, I pulled Mortec in to help Help me manage all of that very cool so that's that's been a fascinating journey yeah. trying to figure out how more tech can help with sport of all things yeah um if, if, i have to admit that i never heard of that sport before you told me about it and so if, if anybody else is that ignorant uh it's it's called surf as in windsurf and ski as in skiing and uh, if you look it up uh it it certainly looks very very interesting like much more uh whatever at, at least fascinating the the drawback is you can only do it in the oceans right Well, interesting enough, I mean, surf ski is actually one of the largest growing sports, paddling sports in the world, because the surf, surf ski craft itself is really universal. So you can paddle it on a river, you can paddle on a lake, anywhere uh -huh. that you, you want. Um, oh. If there's lots of rocks around, it's not built for bouncing, banging off rocks, it's different boats for that. So you can use it on any body of water, really. Um, but yeah, it, the, the, the sea is where the fun is, because you've got to launch off the beach, you've got to bash out through the surf, which is great fun. And then you ride the wild ocean out behind the surf going you know, to your destination. Uh, typically, we're going from one point to the other with the wind and then you've got to come back in through the surf zone so you've got to ride those waves onto the beach um so there's a there's a lot going on which makes it uh, hang a bit exhilarating but at the same time if that's not your game you can take it down to to an area where it's dead calm water and just put it in and have a gentle paddle around and exactly the same boat so it's 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 a lot of fun and you can kind of find your own place within within the sport to to what suits your level and your interest Hmm. And there I am sitting at my desk. <laughs> Why I want to get out. Okay. Um, good. Now, before we dive into the details of what you did with Mordek and in general for the marketing of the event and in your activities, um, let me ask a broader question. What, what is your... Or the other way around, would you describe yourself as a Mordic expert? How long have you been using it? How deep have, how deeply have you been using it, etc.? What's your take on yourself there? <laughs> It's a very interesting question. I've, I've been in anticipation of of this, of being on your podcast. I've been considering that. Um, I have been involved in Mortex from the very, very beginning. I can't remember exactly what it was. I want it, I want it in, the, in my head, it says 2014. I think Mortex only arrived in 2015. So yeah. within, you know, maybe six months of, of the project uh, starting, I think I've been involved. So certainly from the very beginning. But back then, I was completely ignorant on the ways of the web. I was still learning how to spell the word WordPress, never mind actually build a WordPress site. And uh, I'd, I'd come from using Infusionsoft, which I think is now called Keep. And I'd kind of discovered marketing automation as a complete user and no, no understanding of the technology behind it at all and that had gone with a company of mine that had disappeared and um, that had been sold with the company so I was looking for something else so taken with how fantastic it was to do marketing automation I don't think I don't even know if it had that name back then that I was looking for an alternative and a, a buddy of mine said check out Mortec I don't know how he discovered it and I, I looked at it and there it was there was marketing automation and Mortec in 2015 but I had absolutely no tech ability whatsoever so I've grown in my tech ability um, I've still got a long way to go with Mortec as it's grown as well so I don't know if I'm an expert because My tech skills have had to grow as well, and, and more tech still to this day, I think, requires a fair degree of technical expertise from someone. But I think I've, I've, I've pushed it as hard as I can and tried to make it do things that I wanted to do and butted my heads against bugs and, and all kinds of things. So I think just by being around Mortec for so long, I've got to call myself an expert, but definitely from an average Joe user perspective, I'm not a, I'm not an under the hood, let's go play with cron jobs and, and, um, you know, terminal command prompt stuff. I, I, I cut and paste in that space. So yeah, user maybe an expert um but yeah still still learning still on a massive learning curve oh, but but perfect the, the expert user is is a i guess the, the most important uh perspective on modic if, if that's if that doesn't 
uh, go well, then then everything else is has been in vain, right? So, yeah, I'm I'm interesting about uh, um, I'm interested on on a lot of opinion on of yours, but um, let's let's move on first about. Uh, Uh, or with a question like like what what are you doing what what is this what are the parts of the event how how do you market it all what what are the things that you do with Mordic? Yeah, so if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to give a minor punt for my event because I'm sure we've got surfski peddlers out there who are going to be listening to this. And let me give you some context. I'll, I'll be really brief and then that'll help kind of position what Mortec's doing. So um, the, the event we're talking about is called the Freedom Pedal. Um, it, uh, and the website's freedompedal.co.za. And it is a surfski race that happens from the Cape Town waterfront, uh, which is a fairly well-known place in Cape Town. If you come to Cape Town, you'll definitely end up at the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And we race out to an island just off the coast called Robben Island, which is famous for Uh, where Nelson Mandela was in prison for many, many years and our dark history of our country. And uh, we race around that island and, and back to the uh, back to the start again. It's a, a 27-kilometer race. And um, it happens on, uh, in South Africa, we call them public holidays and the UK calls them bank holidays. But it's a, a day the whole holiday goes on, on uh, the whole country goes on holiday to celebrate something. And they're celebrating Freedom Day where we, you know, kind of transition from the dark days of apartheid into a, a pure proper democracy and um, so we kind of celebrate that day by doing this race which is around robin island a, a pivotal part of of that whole history of south africa and uh, it's become really really popular i think because it happens on freedom day and it involves robin island and it's in cape town it's incredibly picturesque that the, the pedal is 27 k's which is challenging but not so challenging to scare people away so it's proved really really popular and that's where the challenges come in it's it's really popular so our entries are high the number of questions are high and um, you know just I, I get absolutely slammed with uh, queries and questions and entries and changes and transfers and so forth so that's where Morte came in to say well you know this is too much for me now how can I automate this to a, to a, to a large degree and that's uh, yeah that's that that was that was Morte um, yeah I, should we dive into kind of more technically what I'm doing with Mortec or the flow that I'm running Mortec uh, running you know running the event with with using Mortec Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll, I'll let me dive in there. Yeah, so I don't think we're doing anything crazy difficult. It's what I think is maybe different is we kind of think of Mortic as a marketing automation tool. So we're always marketing companies and selling products or sending emails, and it's always in this really commercial setting. Um, so I always say to to the If you're a hammer, the whole world looks like a nail. And uh, I'm a reasonably fluent in Mortec. So whenever I come across a kind of internet problem, I always kind of look to Mortec to try and fix it because it's one of the tools I know, Mortec and WordPress. You know, between those two tools, I can pretty much do whatever I want to do on the web, where I think most other people would be, you know, writing code and, and configuring servers and doing all kinds of things I don't understand. Yeah. So that's why Mortec came to play with, uh, with Freedom Paddle. So essentially, it's, I've got a WordPress website. I've got a entry form, and the entry form asks a whole bunch of questions. It's a Mortic entry form. Um, some of the questions we're asking is, you know, what what um, craft are you using? Because it's not only surf skis. We allow uh, SUP boards, which are stand-up paddle mm -hmm. boards, uh, prone boards, which are lie-down prone boards. We have rowing boats that go across. Uh, we've got a whole kind of all kinds of different categories. So that that's in the form. We've also got different courses. We have the full 27 kilometer course, and we've got two shorter courses. So there's 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 quite a lot of segmentation going on uh, within that entry form, uh, with different age groups in different categories of different prize monies and and so on. So managing all of that is what starts with the Mortic form. And uh, that just, you know, they fill out the Mortic form, it dumps the information into Mortic. Um, once they hit submit though, it actually takes them into a standard WooCommerce and they buy a ticket, uh, they essentially pay the entry fee. And um, and that's kind of their job done, um, nice and simple. Um, but we've now captured all that information into Mortic. And also uh, using a great little plugin, uh, for, I need to, would love to give credit to the author, I can't remember it offhand now, but there's a great little uh, uh, plugin to WordPress called Wootic. And W O O T I C, which is a nice, very, very light uh, plugin for passing WooCommerce information into M Mortic, uh, really works nicely, and uh, we're able to, you know, pass tags into into Mortic and mark uh, people as having paid their entry fee or not having paid their entry fee. Um, so that's that's really nice that we can track that inside Mortic as well. That's Maxi But once, uh, right? Is, uh, sorry, sorry, Eka. Vootic is by, uh, is by Maxi Troma. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, fantastic. So shout out to him. It's it's a really nice little piece yeah. of code. And uh, yeah, and typical open source Ubuntu spirit. He's put it out there free for all of us to use, which is just one of my favorite things about Mortec and the open source community in general. So yeah, it's a really nice of him. Uh, we, we lean on that quite a lot. Um, yeah, then once they're in Mortec, we do some real hyper segmentation. We use tags to tag anything possible. And, um, and then using those tags, we divide people into segments. And... Um, the entry phases, the entry process for the for the event is also phased. Uh, by phase, I mean there's a there's a time limit to it. If you enter in month one, it's a slightly cheaper entry fee. If you enter in month two, it's a slightly more e- expensive entry yeah, fee and yeah. so forth. Because we're trying to then you know encourage people to enter early. So that does mean that I've got a lot of segmentation going on in the background to know when someone entered, what course they entered, what discipline, what gender, what age group, when they entered, have they paid for their entry, have they not paid for their entry. Mm. And I'm using Mortec to filter all of that information and then email everybody um, hyper, hyper personalized emails to say, thanks for your entry, your payment's overdue, or, um, you know, you've, um, you know, we're missing this piece of information from you or well done, you know, you've entered, you're in this segment on this course, uh, rather than just kind of sending a blanket email going, you know, like a newsletter style emails, which mm. um, I think a lot of sporting events just do as a Facebook post or something. And it's, it's one size fits all. And we've really broken that down and used dynamic uh, content on the web. And we've used dynamic content in the emails to make the person's experience of the events mm. really, really tailored to them, um, which is which has been a challenge. And <laughs> sometimes you get it wrong and the wrong information gets sent to the wrong person. It's part of the learning curve. Yeah. Um, but that, that's what's been really nice is to make someone feel real, a sense of almost ownership of the event. And that this event is about is about them. They're not just the bit player on the day and, and part of a, a big field. Okay. Um, okay that's okay, working ask, really well. Quick question. When you say on the web, you're using dynamic web content? Uh, yeah, we are using dynamic web content. Uh, yeah. If you go to the website right now, it's not uh, because uh, the website goes through phases. Uh, the race on the 27th of April and hopefully in the next two weeks we'll be opening entries. And, and at, once entries open, then uh, we'll be using dynamic content there. And uh, it's relatively simple dynamic content, although this year I hope to get a bit more complex with it. And we do simple things. Just if someone returns to the page, we, we greet them by name, uh, you know, assuming that they're allowing that, you know, welcome back. Welcome back, Tim, if you're you know, back on the back on the page. Page. And then we've got a couple of other kind of technical pages where people can transfer entries uh, between one of the, one between, you know, I, I can't make the race, but I've paid for my entry. I want Eka to take over my entry. Mm. Um, we, I've got a fairly sophisticated, more tech driven system for transferring entries from one person to the other. And in yeah. that space, we also use dynamic content to, yeah. to help them through that because we've obviously, they've obviously entered. We have all their information. We can do that quite simply. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I I assume the big picture is clear. The the details are hard to imagine if you've never organized an event like that. I can I, I think it's hard to figure the, the the complexity of it all and what you just described. Transferring one booking to another person is definitely a, a lot of work if you do it manually. And uh, supporting all that. Wow. Okay. And and you're you're doing all that on your own, or are you with the team? Yeah, it's I, 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 principally on my own. And uh, one of the reasons it's on my own is I I'm stubborn. I I, I want to use more tech for this. Uh, I really enjoy using more tech for this. And members of my team, I uh, maybe I'm doing them a disservice. I apologize to uh, to the Freedom Pedal team out there, with the exception of one person. Um, I'm too nervous to introduce them to Mortec because it's a relatively complex tool. And I also think the way I've set it up, because it's only me, I haven't Mm -hmm. considered the right way to label things and categorize things so that others can come in. So yeah, it is only me. But at the same time, if I, if I, one of the challenges for that is it forces me to make sure the automations are really tight so that it's not overwhelming for one person. Um, Because I think uh, one of my business, um, themes that I like to go for, especially with Red Robin, when we're doing marketing automation, is it should be that. It should be marketing automation. It shouldn't need humans to drive it along. A good marketing automation setup, as far as I'm concerned, is completely automated, but it raises a red flag and calls in a human when a human is needed. When someone wants to have a belly-to-belly chat, it yeah. calls the human over and says, this is this is the time now. But until those until those uh, flags are raised, until we hit to those points, the, the automation should be able to get on with the job and do do most of it, because then it's, it's faster for, for for 
for me on one side. And then it's faster for the, in this case, the paddler, but the consumer as well, when they can just interact with the website, get in there, get the result they want, and not have to wait for someone to call them or email them or do something like that. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a test for me to make sure I'm pulling that off because it's, it is only me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, I, I like the fact that you are using beyond email uh and you are you're using a lot of dynamic content emails which we talked about in the last episode dynamic content on the web and uh, a lot of integration as well so i think that's a really good example of, of using Morgan in a more advanced or a really advanced way and uh, it's it's nothing wrong with with doing it as a single user uh setup because in reality, for a nonprofit, that's uh, the only realistic scenario, I guess, unless you put way lot more, uh, way, way, way more work into it. Uh, um, shall we move on to the experiences you made or the thoughts that you have? Or is there anything else you you want to mention? I, oh, one thing I know you have a, or had a podcast on this, this whole thing as well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think maybe if we dive into the podcast, uh, Becca, just talking about that, maybe I would, I would want to mention that I'm not using Mortic in isolation. It is, I am using quite a few other tools to pull off, pull off what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, and uh, I think that's one of the magic things of Mortic is that you are able to, to, into, it's actually a double edged sword. It's magic that you can integrate Mortic with so many other things, but it's mm -hmm. also for a non coder like me, incredibly challenging to do so because there, for the most part, there isn't a simple click button and, and, and have Mortic talk happily to, to something else. You've mm -hmm. got to start playing with some of the dirty code, I call it, uh, which I don't, where I don't belong, but I have, I have played in that. But, um, obviously WordPress. I use Google Sheets a lot. I, I'll push information out of Mortec into Google Sheets using Integramat. Um, although mm -hmm. I'm busy starting to play with N18 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, nice, and, nice. You know, Integramat a, a nice little glue that passes information in middleman. And I use I'll do a lot of processing of, of of data inside Google Sheets, and then either push it back onto the WordPress site or or push it back into into um, more tech, you know, having having been processed mm. uh, to what I want, uh, especially with like the transfer things. I'm in. I'll use a Google Sheet to look for the the email address inside more tech of the person who's handing over their entry, mm. and um, uh, and 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 uh, a formula to look for the uh, the email address of the person who's coming in and kind of marrying them together to make sure that this isn't a, it isn't a fraudulent transfer. Yeah. And then the Google Sheet's doing that, and then you know push the result back <laughs> into into more tech to say, hey, well done, you've entered that person's out, and you're in, and you can now see your name on the website as a confirmed entry um so that's wordpress google sheets no, more tech. The yeah. <laughs> and uh and integramat yeah. yeah yeah so that but uh, what i do want to stress is i'm no coder i've done this i've done this as a relatively non-technical guy as a, as a user of of more tech um it, it, honestly if i can do it anybody can do it really <laughs> i just need a bit of bloody-minded determination yeah. Yeah, it's just like you said. It's the, the things that you know best. You you use them for for everything, even if there's exactly. many other ways exactly. to solve things. Yeah, yeah, and then Google's your friend. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, okay, so Modic, you you mentioned you've been there from from the really early days in 2015 when when the first beta arrived, I guess, or alpha. I don't know, but 2015 it was, and it has come has come a long way since then. And we all know it's it's uh, certainly not perfect yet, and there's a lot of ideas and rough edges still, etc. So, your perspective is, I think, good to hear, especially for the developers as well. Um, when you look at Mordic where it is today, it's just probably hopefully much better than it was in, in the beginning but but there's, there's things that you miss or that you dislike or something like that uh do you have any specific area that Mordic should put the most focus on today or it's just, just a mix of everything yeah um it's kind of you know when you when you when you get a puppy you don't really notice it growing up it just one day mm. was a puppy and next day it's a big dog and you can't re, you know it, you don't really notice that change sure. um and that's what it's been like with with me for Mordek because i've been involved since the very beginning it almost still feels the same to me as it was back then and it definitely mm. isn't but that's because i'm using it all the all the time i'd love to actually have a historical uh museum uh Eka, i know you've got a, a a mac museum probably sitting behind you right <laughs> now i'd i'd love a Mordek museum <laughs> 
<laughs> virtual more than I can go back and, and draw comparisons. Yeah. yeah, but for sure, Mortic is, has come a hang of a long way from where from where it is. Um, I think just. I think the biggest feature with how Maltex develops is the size of the community. Um, I think the core community that it's actually that's developing and contributing is still really, really small. Um, but the user community is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, and the you know back in the day the forum. Uh, I think it did start with a forum. You you would have no responses, and I think John Linhart, Linehart, I think was really active back then. If I've mm. got the name correct, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, one or two other people it was very very code heavy and code specific. Nowadays, you know, we're seeing kind of more everyday users asking questions and getting involved and trying to help everyone else. I think the size of the community has really been probably the biggest the biggest change. Um, but it's finished. The UI has hardly changed at all. Uh, it's almost identical. There are a couple of extra features in there. I mean, this mm. latest now upgrade to version four. We saw some really nice stuff coming in. Uh, more plugins and you know, to change columns and uh, you know the the new email builder, and and so forth. But things I'd like to see in Mortic. Well, I've made some notes here, and I've, I've, I gave up. I think after twenty seven, whatever how many here, I stopped writing. I thought this is going to sound like a, a full end to end complaint list, <laughs> which is not the case at all. Because Mortic is truly a magnificent, magnificent piece of software um but let me answer your question in a general term where where do i think their focus should be i think from being a user and not a coder i would love to see mortic shift from what appears to me as a non-coder to have been quite coder focused uh, developer focused if you look at the, at the forums and 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 so on there's lots of talk of github and code this and code that and you know just you know put this in here and here it's very technical for the, it's very daunting for the for the user who just wants to get in and use a piece of software mm-hmm. and i'd love more tech to kind of shift for, out of that growth period where it's been now the kind of development kind of extended beta phase if you want to call it that to really being focused on the user experience now to attract more people like me to it so many people like me rock up and um, coming from a, a hub spot or, or something else that's kind of you know mature and ready to go and uh, just suddenly find themselves having to play with cron jobs and um, you know g- setting up Amazon SES and all this kind of stuff that gets really complex really fast and you know I think they end up going back to their back to their proprietary tools and I'd, I'd like to see more to kind of really rise up and be a real player in that space to that type of community the the, the users um, mm-hmm. and and steer away from having to be reasonably technical in order to get more to do what you want it to do mm-hmm. yeah you, you you just mentioned the the forums which are still or more than than the, more than in the past we try to make that the focal point of support and uh, I'm really wondering whether um, we should make a dif- difference there not say okay here there's uh, so many f- forum categories but this is for support and everything goes into that from develop uh, issues or bugs or uh set up cron jobs and and but also set up the best campaign etc and uh we, in, in our agency we always differentiate between the user the integra- integrator and the, the developer the integrator would be the one to set up a cron job or, or uh, configure an API or something. And the, the user would really be the one to set up ah, dynamic web content or, or email campaigns or double opt-ins or whatever. Um, if, mm, I, I'm sure we need all of those because there will be people who set up Mordic and uh, there will be people who have multiple, multiple roles, but... but uh, Maybe it's easier if you're just a user to live in a forum category that is just for users. I'm, I'm not sure that 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 helps, but but given that that we have the sort of questions, the sort of supports, uh, of interactive support anyway, um, that we have, that's not going to change immediately. We can just give it a better structure, and we can support that by by non-interactive things like like documentation, etc. That, that's just my two p- pens there, but but yeah, I, 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 I agree completely. I think uh, I think one thing that I would love to see a section on the forum is 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 marketing advice and marketing guidance, um, mm-hmm. in, and how Mortic has a role in that ecosystem. Oh, see, yeah. uh, would would be lovely, and you know, for example. Um, if I would love, and I'm, I'm busy kind of pull, putting something together at the moment, mm-hmm. uh, but I would love to have a forum. I could maybe it starts with a blog or a tutorial from somebody um, mm-hmm. and who on how to, you know, best practices for marketing your e-commerce 
website and mm-hmm. you start broad out like with that that challenge and, and now that's going to attract someone who has either been employed to market a, an e-commerce site or is trying to market their e-commerce site and they go like okay what is what are best practices here so that's almost not software specific mm-hmm. but um, starts at that point and then zooms down into you know how to, how to tag people how to pull them into an automation? What or what 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 uh, campaigns you should have, mm-hmm. and and then in Mortec, what what does that campaign look like in Mortec? These are the steps to pulling it to, uh, pulling it together: reactivation campaigns, engagement campaigns, that kind of marketing one hundred and one. But but linked to Mortic, um, and if I if I look at things like uh, ClickFunnels, for example, or HubSpot, yeah, um, obviously yeah, yeah. these are for profit uh, companies. They have resources that Mortic doesn't have, um, but they're they're selling their tools and they're providing getting people to use their software, but providing those services to people and. Um, I certainly see that, for example, in HubSpot. And then I go, well, how can I do that in Mortec? And it'd be lovely to have a forum and a community that helps to transition that theoretical knowledge into a practical implementation inside of inside of Mortec yeah. for the for the user, for the for the marketer, or for the you know the DIY marketer who's just marketing their own business. Yeah. Um, I, I think that would be a phenomenal asset to the to the forum. Yeah, yeah, interesting approach uh, because HubSpot, of course, they go all the way from from the really general marketing concepts down into their tool um, and uh, there are things in the middle and uh, yeah Mordic should, should move up a little bit in, in that direction at least and say okay if you come from the really general things that you maybe learn from from HubSpot um, how does that translate into the Mordic world that would be beyond what we have today but the other thing is, is still um Interactive support in a forum is is a different thing than uh, documentation, tutorials, uh, guidance, um, and both are not so easy. I know that the ed- education team tries hard to 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 create content or to collect content from from others and all that, and to to give it structure and to make it available. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. You can talk yeah, about things exactly. Forever. Exactly. We've got to, we've got to give credit to those guys, and mm. uh, and and you know, but um, you know, it'd be nice to have an eye on the price, and that kind of pulls us towards that direction. And of course, there's there's we, we don't have to have the, we don't have to you know, Rome wasn't built in the day. We have those small things. But you know, mm. for example, you know, here is a and this would be great. I know there's a marketplace coming in Mortec right now. We're under kind of just testing of that. I'm not sure how that's going to roll out, but we want wonderful. And here's a non techie person asking for something that the tech guys are going to go well that's really hard to do easy to say hard to do but wouldn't it be amazing if i'd built a beautiful e-commerce uh mortic uh campaign process emails mm. you know the, the segmentation the whole lot and i could export that and you know sell it or give it away and someone can inload and in, you know import it and just start modifying it and they've now got you know a, a, an end-to-end e-commerce solution and uh, driven by more tech uh, oh, that, that would be i think a game changer yeah we, we all want that uh, one, one thing is to, to have a marketplace maybe even for money but but the other thing is just to to deliver some boilerplate campaigns with Mordic to make it much easier start for people. And uh, yes, we yeah, do dummy, con- dummy content, you know, yeah. that's that that kind of thing, dummy content, dummy, you know, as you say, boilerplate. So that would be uh, that would be fantastic. And I think maybe that's where Mordic's got to go and have that kind of focus on on getting started mm. quickly and not just technically getting started quickly, kind of use case getting started quickly as yeah. well. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, anything else that you have on your list there? Yeah, I'll go, I tell you what. Right at the, right at the bottom of my list here, and Echo, I know you're looking at the list as well. We shared this. Uh, we shared this ahead of time. Um, <laughs> we got peek behind the curtain there, chaps. Okay. Um, the um, I think, and this, I'm not sure where 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 when Mortec first started as a project. I know CRM functionality was not what Mortec was all about. I mm-hmm. think it was quite clear. I think in the early days of Mortec that we would integrate with CRM packages, and mm-hmm. Mortec would not be a, a a, a CRM mm-hmm. um, coming from Infusionsoft back then, which had CRM and marketing automation welded together. That didn't really make sense to me because I actually don't see how the how the two can be easily separated. They are so integrated to know where a customer is in their journey pipeline, be it to be able to pull up customer information, to be able to assign tasks to different users within your organization. So I'd love to see even just basic um, CRM kind of type functionality, not not fully fledged. 
a CRM, but I would love more tech to kind of start to bring in some CRM um, functionality. I mean, I know there's stages within within more tech. I haven't played with it already and very much, so maybe that can be used, but kind of more integrated to know I've got a deal. It's at this particular stage um, and, you know, be able to pop a message to another user to say, you know, please won't you, you know, do X, Y, Z, all within that, that platform, not having to leave that platform and go over to a Salesforce or a pipe drive or something like that. Um, I think that would be that'd be that'd be something I'd be I'd find really useful. And in my in my talking to the community, I, I know there's quite a few people asking for that as well. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, but, but one thing for me that I always find is that the contact uh, view is there. There's a lot of room for improvement. Certainly, starting from filters and and um, all sort of things in, that you could do in, in this view, uh, like bulk edit and, and th things like that, uh, that are really missing and that are still in this area of, of marketing automation because CR CRM to me is, is more on the sales side and, and it is, is a really, really huge and endless thing and, and also the hell. Uh, so so I, I, I'm shy of doing CRM really. But okay, yeah, okay, understood. And yeah. I know there's a demand for that, but but... Wow. Okay, but <laughs> maybe not this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I mean, listening to Ruth and and talk, I know there's a lot of challenges with more tech uh, going forward with with uh, things I don't understand, basic frameworks that it's based on, and and so forth. Um, so I think the the small team who's making more tech work for us has has their plates very full. So this is a this is a wish list um, mm. uh, of of things. Okay, one thing enough. I do, one thing I would really like to see some either some in-depth training on from those that understand or a redesign of, of is the reporting module within yes. uh, within Mortec. Yes. I, I, I just, I don't find it. I've really tried hard to master that and I struggle um, and I just, it just doesn't seem intuitive at all. And I think that's a, a if, it, if, if there is a, a major weak point within Mortec, I think it's probably the the reporting functionality. Um, as I say, either in, either in training us how to use it properly and that's actually fine. We just don't know how to use it. Mm. As I say, the problem lies between the keyboard and the chair or or is it the actual how the reporting module and the logic that pulls it together needs to be re-looked at yeah i i wonder that or i i'm, I'm stunned that it's rarely mentioned at all because nobody's using it or is, is really using it and uh, most people think ah oh, it must be me <laughs> but yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I completely agree with you it's it's really hard to to understand and and also lacking a lot of things yeah yeah I'm with i you. went i went i went into one of my mortic instances and i looked the other day i had 78 segments uh which i think is a crazy number of segments for the for the small little thing it was doing and i realized the reason i had so many segments is i was using segment filters to replace the job of the reporting module uh, okay. which is just the wrong way around so mm. i think you're right people aren't moaning about the reporting module just simply because we're not using it and yeah and maybe feel people feel silly that they should know how to use it and therefore they're not posting about it but here i am saying hey i i maybe i'm the, maybe i'm too dumb to use it please help me if there's anyone out there and he's listening right now you know and uh, you, can, you can give me some training on how to use the reporting module mm. um you know beers on beers are on me yeah um Echo, uh, uh, what, for someone who's a user like me, and I'm, I'm self-hosting, and I think, as I say to everyone, I've got no business self-hosting because um, I'm blindly following recipes, tutorials that I discover on YouTube, and I'm going way back to 2015 where, you know, I, I didn't really know how websites worked or how to, what's the difference between domains and hosting and all those good things way back then, and I've been self-hosting since that point, um, and, and really I was just blindly following what someone would tell me to do, and if something went wrong, I would be, you know, none the wiser of how to fix that, um, and I... Every now and again, I kind of discover that on the forum as well, people doing the same thing as I did. And to some extent, I'm still there. So I think one, what would be really nice is to have a Mortec recommended um, ideal environment for self-hosting Mortec. Um, I'm not talking about limiting how you can host it, but a, a recommendation, a uh, reference point for maybe a small Mortic installation. Um, for example, I know Mortic can run on a shared host. The moment I say shared hosting, everyone, all the uh, developers out there say, no, 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 never. It needs its own dedicated place. However, I've been able to run it quite successfully on a shared host as long as it was very, very small. Yeah. And for a small one person, one website, doesn't get much traffic, that works. Yeah. Um 
and maybe a medium and a, and a large, or, or maybe not large, because large would be, be highly technical. But if there's, if there's a recommended Mortic recipe for server size and speed and softwares that go along with it, then support, I think, would be a lot simpler. You, you, you know, one of the support team or just uh, someone on the forum could say, you know, have you installed it as per the Mortic um, recommendations for a small setup? And if you go yes, then they then they, they can make some assumptions on your on your server setup, mm. and the support could maybe a little be a little bit more in, intuitive um, than trying to figure out exactly your server environment and setup and so forth. Um, again, this is a non techy guy asking for for tech stuff, so I may be uh, you know this is not possible. Um, mm. But for me, mm. I think that would make things a lot smoother with people's experience and limit their frustrations with Mortic. Yeah, uh, well, I, I see your point, and may, maybe such sort of a minimum reference environment would be helpful. The other thing is that there are other way are other ways like pre prepackaged uh, installations where you don't have to fiddle with crunch up, etc., which may be much better for other type of people. So yeah, but but maybe. Hmm. That, that that's fascinating. That, that you know, prepackaged thing that I could put yeah. onto a self host. You know, uh, it could be cloud hosted. But if yeah. I want to self host, yes, yeah, and, and yeah, you yeah. Know, but I'm I'm kind of yeah. sent this zip, if you will, if for lack of a better word, and I with instructions on how to deploy that into, you know, onto my onto my you know my my shared server or my my you know virtual server, whatever it might be, and you know just unra unra unravels itself, and I've mm. got a kind of good to go more tech, yeah, and maybe yeah, with some yeah. of that boilerplate uh, functionality and <laughs> campaigns and good things already bundled in there yeah that would be that would be amazing yeah okay yeah but but i i know that's a big deal that, that there's a million ways of, of installing modic and hosting modic and uh you always have to figure out where the issues are in, in in case of troubleshooting from from scratch okay so that's uh hosting anything else you want to bring up I, I, t I think th I, I hesitate to bring this up because um, a lot of work has gone into this and and I, I know Mordek's pretty proud of it as well. And I'm talking about the the email builder, the you know the dynamic content builder, mm -hmm. landing page builder. It's all the same. There's this um, I think the grape grape.js I might I haven't really played with it I have I did play with the beta version and now mm. I haven't uh, played too much with it mm. um, it's a it's a great jump up from what from what we had um, again as a as an ignorant simple user I'm familiar with tools like Thrive Architect uh, with like, like Elementor uh, these kind of drag and drop builders and I'm sure having a drag and drop builder of that caliber is an immense Time investment, perhaps financial investment, I don't know. But if you compare those builders to what we have in Mortic at the moment, it feels like Mortic's kind of not 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 there yet. And I see a lot of frustrations again in the forum, and I have trying to you know, get mails that look just like they want. And this code pops up, and you've got to edit codes and and play with you know semicolons and open script tags and things, and then also dropping pictures in. Um, yeah. Also, if I look at things like Mailchimp and uh, MailerLite, I don't use those programs a lot, but every now and again I'll dabble in them. Those builders are pretty powerful and very very easy to use and to produce great things. And mm. um, I just feel more tick is we're getting in that direction for sure. Uh, but given that. Mortic is primarily a device to send emails. The email builder to to be simple to use builder um, would be uh, something I would I would love to you know improve on. Yeah, uh, absolutely agree. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yeah, we we uh, I think I think if I can the bottom line I'm driving at here if we can start kind of limiting. Um, the need for non-techy people to get under the hood, uh, so to speak, and and to get more tech to work properly, and have it more focused on on results. People are using the software not because it's cool. They they're using more tech because they want to sell more stuff. Invariably, that's what it is. They want to market. They want more leads coming in, and they want to hand that over to sales or close more deals themselves. That's that's more tech's real job um, out there. And uh, the less time someone has to spend fiddling around with, uh, you know on cPanels and servers and so forth, and the more time they can actually spend getting that result of more leads through the door, uh, through Mortec, I think the better. And I'd love to see Mortec kind of, you know, shift, start shifting focus in that direction to help people uh, achieve that goal. Um, I think that's going to take Mortec from where it is now. And, uh, you know, we're going to start not rivaling WordPress because we're completely different, but we'll, we'll become the, what WordPress is to web building, Mortec will become to marketing automation. That's what I'd like to see it go. 
Well, yeah, in a way we are that already, <laughs> even if if not that uh, ease of use, but but yeah, and, and, and certainly not that that range. Um, so if I get that correctly, this is about yeah ease of use on the one hand, but also about guidance on the other hand. Is that that fair description? I th- I think so. I think if, if I had to put that in priority order, I'd say ease of use first. Yeah. Um, like I'd love to see a button that you just click a button inside Mortec and it fires your cron jobs for you. So you don't have to wait for cron jobs to fire or go into your C panel and figure out how to fire them automatically or do them to do it some other way through a command prompt. That would be lovely. Mm. So there's a there's an ease of use uh, side of it or be able to actually maybe change your cron jobs uh, oh. within <laughs> Mortec. You know, so ease yeah, of use yeah, that yeah. way, but then yeah. translating that into practical, how do I get more leads? Um, um, mm. Would be the, the secondary function. Yeah, yeah. By the way, there's a plugin for that. Yes, and I'd love to see that kind of because it's so critical to to yeah. how Mortic runs. It, it, why is it a plugin? Why can't? It, why is it not just a, a standard bundled yeah. core feature? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. that, that really. All, I mean, you, you mentioned a couple of times that the 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 teams are tiny, and the, especially the the development team is is tiny. And obviously, it's not not a they. It 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 is us. So, so all the developers are community. Uh, there's a little bit of support from 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 Acquia who pays who who is paying people. But but so are we. For instance, we we are paying people, or we are giving employees time to contribute to Mordic. Um and that's the way open source works. So so the the big thing that we are struggling or that we have been struggling for for a while now is is to make it easier to contribute and to understand what, what the ways for contribution for instance all this input that you that you've been giving in the last i don't know 45 minutes uh, or a lot of that is it, it should turn into into changes or into things that, that are done in in Mordic and all that means somebody has to spend time and do things be be it uh, write specification or or uh, do do some coding or or test what have been coding and co- coded and then comment on that or document that or 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 talk about it in, in marketing for Mordic uh, f- Probably, it's not like nobody out there is willing to do that, but give, giving people starting points and transparency and all that is, is the biggest challenge in my mind. So if, if we could just leverage all the potential that we have in, in terms of, of community and contribution, that would be crucial. And um, I would be interested to hear, I mean, I, I know you've, you're not completely remote of, from, from the Mod community, you've attended Mod conference and all that. Uh, but, but do you feel well informed? Would you, if you wanted to contribute more, would you would you know what to do, or or would you know where to look, or or where are you? Yeah, I mean, one of my since Mordecon and anyone who didn't attend Mordecon last year, the the virtual Mordecon, really attended next year. I learned so much; it was fantastic. So definitely attend that. Um, but one of the inspirations that I came away with from attending that Mordecon uh, Mordecon is it definitely transitioned me from being a kind of passive user and sitting in the sidelines to some extent with uh, with Mordecon. And my, my only posts into the forum were for my questions to committing myself to trying to be a contributor. Um, and I did, the first thing I did, um, and I, I, I've dropped the ball a little bit but I'm trying to pick it up again is just be more present in the forums and answer questions where I can now a lot of those questions are fairly technical in nature uh, which I just um, I, you know, I just don't feel skilled enough to answer those questions but where there's a question on a, on a campaign or a use case of, of Mordek I really try and chip in or if I've, if I've um, tried to if I've managed to solve a problem in the past I'll chip in there as well so uh, it is a I think Ruth has put it out yesterday uh, there is a leaderboard of who, who's most active on the forums and uh, I think I've managed to make it on to that list i think she le- releases it each month i think twice uh, so it's a little kind of test case for me if i'm contributing enough if i'm on that list and i missed that list this last month um so i need i need to pick up but to answer your question eka no i could probably dig in there i know ruth's been pretty active with saying how you can contribute if you're not a coder um 
so it's probably there if I go looking for it. But I think I'd, it would lovely, it would be great to have a real kind of spoon fed because people are inherently lazy. Spoon fed instructions on, and and ways that those of us who 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 don't code, um, who aren't technical, can contribute to this and really make it easy for us to contribute. I think that would be I, I would be far more involved if that was the the case. And I, if Ruth's listening to this, she's probably already saying right now. But it is easy. Um, I'm saying. Let's let's even make it easier. And in practice, that's a, maybe that's a contribution I can offer is to figure out how to make it easier. If it's easy for me to do, then it's going to be easy for others. Um, but but I, I mean, I have a question for you. How can we? How can someone like me contribute more to the Morde project? Oh, <laughs> oh man, um, I would I would first say okay. There's there's two two layers. One one is the local layer. And what one is the global layer? So, so if you are um, willing to to contribute to the actual project, to the code base, to the documentation, you're automatic, automatically on the global layer. But um, it's also very important, very valuable to have the local modic communities to help people in your own region, in your own culture, to to network with them and to to spread the word on Mordic jointly, etc., rather than just a, as a single company or a single person trying to, to do an isolated job there. Um, so, so for many, the, the starting point of contribution is, is just being part of the local Mordic community, attending meetups, online meetups, uh, helping out people, whatever. And uh, in some non-English regions, it's probably even more important than it is in South Africa. Uh, so we have a strong community in Brazil, in Japan, in, in Germany, in, in uh, Spain, other places. Um, that's one thing. And, and if you want to be active there, there's uh, a lot of potential in, in either starting in or, or organizing an own community, a local community, if it does not exist, or in enhancing that. Uh, on the global layer, there's, as I said, there's many things to be done, um, and that is a little bit reflected in in the teams that we ha- that we have, in the, in the product team, in the marketing team, and in, in the education team, and in, in the community team, and a little bit in, in finance and uh, legal. That's the th- fifth team that we have. The product team is not just about coding; it is also about uh, doing the right product strategy and, and all and uh, it also connects into document in documenting the product and then documenting for developers etc properly education team is more on on organizing the documentation in in, in, in supporting the forums and, and and all those other things and uh, and having a, a knowledge base of tutorials etc uh, to help people get started and, and going in that direction that you mentioned earlier to 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 uh, educate people on higher levels, you know, not just in, in here's how this feature, how this button works or how this code line can be changed and all that. Um, so if you want to contribute to, to the, that sort of things, one, one way is of course to to join a team and that doesn't mean you have to uh, subscribe to a, con- to a contract or something but you, you can uh, read uh, along in, in the in the slack channels slack is really the, the core channel here uh, you can sneak in, in, into meetings and just listen in and, and things like that and or you can always get in touch with individuals like like a team lead or with Ruth or myself or whatever um, and and ask them hey I'd like to do a little bit in this thing I don't know where to get started uh, and and find out what's the best best place for you on a personal level that's frequently a good good way to go the other thing would be to, to come from a functional level and say yeah, I, I really care about this email builder thing and then there there's of course the initiatives the Builder initiative, for instance, and uh, or or much discussed, but not not really up to speed. Tiger teams, which would be even more 
specific where you have target teams for certain functionalities like like here's a target team for reporting for instance and then you can say okay i, I want to care about nothing but reporting and uh, I'm, I'm not even a developer but but i want to make uh i, I want to bring modic reporting to a whole new, new level and keep improving on a continuous level that would be the other way to go so so it's pretty widespread and then and in in hearing this talking you you once again see the complexity in in open source it's not a top down hierarchical for profit for profit organization but it's it's really uh people do what they care about most most for whatever or what they consider most fun for themselves um and we need to to work on structuring all that on a continuous level so i i i, I guess you're more confused than you were before but but this uh, bottom line is do th do things locally uh for sure and if you want to do things globally you can always look at contribute.modic.org to to read about all these things or you can easily get in touch with people like ruth and, and get starting points there thanks Eka. actually while you were doing that i jumped onto forum.modic.org and um scroll down you know normally if you look at that page you just kind of look at the right hand side of the page and the latest posts and, and you dive right in there but reading down the left where all the categories are um you do have the community tab which i think is kind of i have not clicking into it now but this is the home of all things associated with mortic you'll find subcategories for each team etc etc um Maybe, I mean, I've, it's, it's, I'm just noticing that now for the first time, you just have this, you know, screen blindness sometimes where you just look for what you're after. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe a suggestion is maybe make, seeing as open source is all about community, um, bringing, bringing that, that community section of the forum kind of more prominent and encouraging people by just making it more obvious on the page of how mm -hmm. they can get involved. Um, it looks like everything's there. I, I'm, I'm wearing my marketing hat right now and uh, going, you know, how do we, how can, how can we <laughs> improve and encourage? Because essentially, if we're looking for more community members within Mortec, it really is a marketing expert. We need, you know, we need to, you know, make people consider it. We need to make people, you know, interrupt them. We want them to get involved, sign up, you know. Yeah. So we basically are taking people from awareness to, to leads to action, which would be the sale. So we can, we can apply our, our marketing techniques, which most of us in more tech are, mm. uh, to putting this pulling this through um, and and getting and building this community, because uh, I do, as you said, I do feel more confused and there's Slack channels, but you know, I, uh, what would I do after after this uh, podcast? Where would I what would I click on first to yeah. to contribute? Or what's my what's my first step? Yeah. Uh, and maybe the first step is visiting this community section of the forum. <laughs> and uh, there you go. As a, as I think. It's not a perfect place because we, we have this split between Slack and the forum and, and Slack is by definition the th thing for the uh, short-term conversations and uh, it's way, way more active than, than the for in the forums. So you have things in, in two places if, uh, yeah, in, in some cases. And uh, so what I can say is uh, welcome to the community team, w w which is in charge to uh, to to organize this this onboarding and, and this the structure all the structures that I mentioned and and to make it much more accessible and to to, to lower the barriers. So that's again <laughs> a task. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think I've just written myself a job description. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, one thing I want to mention too is uh, that um, you're not talking purely theoretical, and you you've been active on the forums, uh, but there's also a really nice tutorial of yours uh, that is pretty well known, I guess, about uh, setting up the API connection from Thrive, Thrive Leads into Modic, and I'll link to that YouTube video. I figure that has been some hard work to to create all that, and and it it is. Well, pe people have a lot of respect, f or, or uh, well, are, are afraid of undertaking such a thing. Uh, so it doesn't always have to be like that. Much, much smaller things are also appreciated. But, but for this thing, that's a really lovely example. So yeah, thanks for that one. Yeah, it's it's it, it's my pleasure. And um, yeah, it was it was actually blinking uh, that tutorials about connecting a third party form 
form builder and in this case it was thrive leads but i think most most third party form builders would work mm. connecting it with mordek without using api and 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 also the quicker here was firing the um the mortic uh, pixel the mortic cookie mm-hmm. uh, because most of the integrations don't allow for that so the anonymous ip kind of related tracking history is not assigned to the now known contact so that was a challenge for me that i found most of these uh, kind of webhook driven um ways of connecting didn't work so that was something there but i'd also I'm, i quite enjoy doing those tutorial videos so one way i'd like to contribute if someone is out there who isn't comfortable putting a tutorial video together but is happy to teach me what they've got um i will you know with credit to them actually pull the tutorial videos together and um because i'm learning a skill and then through through those tutorial videos i'm you know i can share that with the community as well so if anyone's listening who uh, feels a bit shy about getting behind the camera and f- filming something um you know let's let's team up and uh, and and put that into a knowledge pool for the community to to use wow there we go <laughs> excellent okay i think uh, that's something we couldn't have a better end than that um is there anything else you want to plug or bring up uh no um well, actually, two things. I do want to. I do want to say a, th- a thank you to to Joey Keller. We, we the, he has has broad shoulders and a lot of more tech leans on him, especially in the support world. And I'm sure there are others as well that that fill that role. And also on a personal note, Mike from Surge Media has uh, also been incredibly helpful with me of late with with my more tech journey. And I want to end up with a with a big thank you. I think a, a fair chunk of what we've been talking about today has been asking for things that we feel are missing in more tech. But I, I want to highlight and say a huge thankful thanks to to everybody in the more tech project for building what is an incredible tool and what I'm seeing guys like Joey and Mike do with Mortec and, and what they're delivering based off the hard work of other people is, is quite phenomenal. So a massive thank you that we have this tool called Mortec and thank you to the development team and those with the vision that have made this happen. Uh, from, uh, from a user, uh, it is an amazing tool and uh, yeah, m- massive gratitude. Thank you so much. Okay, and I want to thank you for your time and for all the insights and in the open statements. And uh, I am looking forward to hear more from you and then maybe see you somewhere in some team in some place or whatever. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking at, to you. Take care. At, at Mordecon in Cape Town one year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> flights are, uh, are, are very booked to, to Cape Town, as I recall. So, so we need early plans. But, but I love to yeah, we have the early plans yeah. absolutely Eck, yeah. it's been a privilege to be on the podcast thank you so much for the invite and uh, I wish you all the best through the German winter <laughs> don't mention it okay <laughs> yeah F- same to you uh, take care thank you cheers Bye-bye. yeah how enlightening now I know what surf ski paddling is <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what a fun sport I say but the interview itself just was not only about sports event, but so much more than that. Oh yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. And um, after the interview, I thought a little bit about doing a mod conference uh, Africa <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, in Cape Town, which I'd love, but uh, I'm not sure because of the, pr- <laughs> the <laughs> flights are so pricey and yeah. so, so early booked. So well, I, I don't know yet. Maybe. We what can make cool. it one day. <laughs> yeah. um, Add it to the list. <laughs> uh, if nothing else, it's certainly good weather in November. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of envious. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then coming to the community corner, um, we have a roundup of the fourth quarter of 2021 written by Ruth. Um, if you're interested, please check it out. It's linked in the show notes. And yeah, it's... It, it's a, a community roundup. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love the fact that Ruth is doing this every quarter yeah. and uh, is really collecting um, bits and pieces, not only from product advancement, but but also in marketing and, and community and, and uh, what else do we have? Oh, education. <laughs> education, for example. Yeah. And it's what else is going on also? So, yeah, it's uh, worth a look. Check it out. Um that's one thing I want to remind everybody of because it's not new, but it's still great. Mm-hmm. And that is the Mordic Help Desk Meetup. It's a special type of meetup. It's basically a global thing where on a regular basis, Dave Shargel and, and Joey Keller are mm-hmm. there to help other people with their issues. Uh, typically beyond 10 people in the call yeah. um, learn from each other. Uh, also give their ideas and insights, but also bring their questions to the table and hopefully get, get them fixed. Yeah, very I'm cool. sure the format will evolve over time, but but it's already 
a fun thing to to join. Yeah. yeah. And talking about Mordic event, we've recently, very, very recently, started using AirMeet as the event platform on which we will hold the community events, such as the Mordic help desk meeting, but also looking forward to the uh, Mordic global conference. So it's just the event platform that is underneath, organizing mm -hmm. all the booths and yeah. uh, tracks and etc. And we're really excited to work with that. Yeah. Yeah, you will notice if you attend uh, Multi Conference Global in, in June, it is going going to be on uh, June eighth to nine to mm -hmm. ninth this year. Um, it's just even smoother than last year, even, even better, <laughs> shinier, and yeah. much better content, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah, speaking of that content, yeah. yeah and, um, The call for speakers is already open for Mordic Conference Global. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have anything you consider talking about, please go there now and submit your ideas. And um, it doesn't have to be in English. We will have uh, several languages one, uh, once again, like every year. Nice. A yeah. German track, a French <laughs> language track, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, Hungarian. Mm, yeah. I don't know what else. Uh, Swedish, maybe, maybe Japanese or, again. Oh yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sorry for that. Yeah, so go there now. The link is in the show notes, like a lot of other links are in the show notes. Um, and make up your mind and uh, submit your talk real soon. Yeah, yeah. Write it for for a lot of different talks. Yeah. I have one little plug at the end uh, for all the German listeners mm -hmm. to this podcast. Yeah. First of all, you're in the wrong, wrong channel. <laughs> <laughs> There's a German version of this podcast in uh, modcast.de. No, but you're welcome to, to stay here. The other thing is that we have our regular um, German language meetup for Germany, uh, Austria, and Switzerland. Like always, it's the first Monday of the month, mm -hmm. this uh, February 7th in this case. Yeah. And we'll have to talk about uh, analyzing Mordic data with Metabase Ooh. by Stefan Luko. And uh, yeah, we're looking, we're looking forward to that. And that will also be on Airmeet, of course. It's like uh -huh. like a little bit tryout yeah. for Airmeet. Okay, what else? Oh, not much. I'm, I'm glad I could be here again talking to you, recording another episode of the Mordicast. I mean, we are episode 31 now it's it's been a while since we're doing this and um yeah do you have any last words to say no 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 uh, <laughs> uh, my my new year's resolution is certainly to have more modicast uh, episodes <laughs> perfect uh, yeah <laughs> and uh yeah I'm, i'm appreciating your time dear listener uh i i'm glad you made it to, to the end <laughs> i hope uh, was something in it for you If you liked the episode, share it. Yeah, uh, please. Or send chocolate to Leon. He <laughs> oh, looks oh, hungry. Please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> or, or both. Yeah, if, if, uh, I would yeah. be mad. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, yeah, um, I appreciate all sort of feedback. And uh, we all do. Yeah. And uh, see you soon in the Mordic world. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.